You have a violin in your hand. The band leader calls an Elton John song. Elton John doesn't have a fiddle. What do you play? This week we will help you figure out how to play in nearly any pop, rock, country, or worship tune. Hey everybody, Matt Bell with the Electric Violin Shop. Welcome back to our From Classical to Radical series, where we are helping you teach classically trained violinists how to easily enter the world of amplified music. Obviously, we all know that the violin is the coolest instrument on the planet. Unfortunately, not everyone is as enlightened as we are. Lots of great songs have been recorded that didn't have any violin parts in them. So when your band leader calls a song that didn't have any violin in the original recording, what do you play? The first thing to do is to listen to the song. And I don't mean a casual pass, I mean really listen. We're listening to these in a very different way than a person who's just sort of enjoying the music. We're trying to deconstruct and figure out exactly how this thing's put together. It's like those kids that get a toy and instead of playing with it, the first thing they want to do is take it apart, figure out how it works and put it back together. Try to pick out every single part. This often requires super high fidelity headphones in a quiet room. If you really listen, you will probably hear things that you didn't notice at first glance. Tambourines, shakers, multiple guitar parts, keyboard parts, synth parts, pads, percussion, all kinds of things that don't normally just sort of jump out at you are super common in modern music. With 100% certainty, I can say that there are parts that are in that song that nobody in your band is going to be playing. It's not uncommon at all for a modern song to have over 100 tracks worth of music in it. I play in a six-piece band that has five singers and a rapper, and we use somewhere around 24 channels. That's just to give you an idea of how many 100 tracks really are. So what I'm getting at is that most live bands, and really any live band, cannot possibly cover all of the parts that you're going to hear on a recording. So once you know what's happening in the song, you can start thinking about the instrumentation that's in your band and what the other players are going to cover. The more you analyze songs and really listen to them, the more you're going to start to recognize patterns in pop music. And if you're playing with one band most of the time, you'll start to figure out who in your band is going to cover which parts before you even get to rehearsal. Now we have to decide what you're going to do. There's two criteria for deciding what you should play. We have to decide which part that's missing is the most important and we have to decide which part that's missing we are going to be the best able to cover. One trick for deciding what the most important parts are is to turn the music down really low, either in your speakers or your headphone. There's probably going to be maybe one or two parts that you can still sort of hear sticking out above everything else. Those may be the most important parts. If you still really aren't sure what to play, get as familiar with the tune as possible, all the parts, all the things that are happening in that tune, and then go to rehearsal and listen to what everybody else is playing. You're probably going to hear, wow, there's, there's some things that I remember hearing that recording that I'm not hearing coming out of my bandmates. Another thing to do is to listen to rhythms. Most songs have sort of a blend of long tones and then more percussive parts. You can figure out which ones are going to be covered by members of your band and then start thinking about the other stuff. I play in mostly a guitar band, so guitars tend to be able to play a lot of chunky or funky or real, um, real transient type parts. So it's often left to me to cover some of the longer tones. Another trick may be chordal. Uh, you want to listen for out of triad type tones. If everybody in your band is playing simple open chords on a guitar or on a keyboard, you might be able to add a ninth or a sixth or a fourth or a seventh and try to fill out that chord and make the sound a little more complex. This is pretty far down on a priority list, but if you're still not finding things to play, Think about playing a harmony part with lines that are being covered. Could you maybe cover a vocal part that's missing? Could you write a counter melody? And remember, your band's version doesn't have to be the same as the original. You want to be true to the original, but then you also want to have some artistry yourself. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to the original song a lot, several times. Maybe listen one time when you're listening for guitar sounds, and you're going to try to listen and pick out as many different guitar parts as you can. And then when you get done, go back and listen for keyboard sounds. Listen another time and try to hear as many vocal parts as you can. A lot of times there's oohs and ahs that are sort of hidden down inside that mix. Um, those are perfect parts for a violin to cover if they're not there. There's a lot of things to listen to on these songs. So you want to think about what you're listening for 
every time you listen through, and then your ear gets better at picking out those parts. After you've listened to the original a bunch of times and your band starts to play, you want to listen to your band. Sometimes you need to stand out front or stand in a different spot so that you can hear the parts that are being covered by your band. And because you're so familiar with that song, you'll be aware that, okay, I'm not hearing the ooze that I heard in there. Maybe I'm not hearing a synth part that I heard in there. Maybe I'm not hearing one of the guitar parts, a little dun 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 Maybe I'm not hearing one of those parts that's in there. So then you can start to think, okay, maybe I'm not hearing four or five of these different parts. Now you can think about which parts you're going to cover. Also remember, there is no sin in sitting one out. Sometimes a stripped down version is going to be the best version of a song for your band, for your crowd, for your venue, for the thing that you're doing. Sometimes it's addition by subtraction. And uh, you know, while we all sort of hate standing there and feeling awkward that we're not doing anything, sometimes artistically, that's the best choice. Set the instrument down. So that's a lot of stuff to think about as we're talking about listening to songs and figuring out how pop songs, worship songs, country songs are all constructed. Violins are extremely versatile instruments. You gotta sometimes think outside the box a little bit and figure out what exactly can I do with a violin. And you know, if you've played Beethoven and Tchaikovsky and even Paganini your whole career, there are gonna be techniques that those guys didn't use that you can use uh, when we're covering uh, modern pop songs. If you've mastered a few different effects and techniques, you can cover a wide range of sounds. Obviously, electric violins can sound like violins. We can also sound like string sections. You can click here to see a video that we did on how to sound like multiple violins. With some distortion, an electric violin can sound a whole lot like an electric guitar. With a simple pedal, you can sound a lot like an organ. Keyboard sounds are also fairly easy, especially if they're sort of a modern synth sound. Uh, you can use an auto wah. You can use a phaser. You can use pitch shifters. Here's one with a flanger and a pitch shifter together. Violins can cover percussion parts or even horn parts. Did my violin sound just like a trumpet here? No. But it's reminiscent enough of a trumpet to cover some horn stabs in a song that otherwise uh, would not have them. I can use my wah pedal to do percussion parts. I can even use my wah pedal to do sort of that DJ scratch thing that you hear in some uh, rap and R&B songs. This is one reason to sit in your practice room and experiment with your effects. If you've got a multi-effects pedal, just spend a bunch of time. Spend some hours just jacking with that thing and discovering sounds. Go through the presets. While you and me and all the cool people in the world really love the sound of a violin, using the same clean acoustic sound all night is going to make your band's songs all start to sound the same. Make sure that you're not falling into a rut with what you play. If you're playing similar stuff on rock songs and country songs, you might want to change up your thought process a little bit. Think about the big picture the whole night. If you have two choices on what to play on a certain song, think about which one of those techniques you use the least and then maybe use that. Again, it's a big picture. We want to try to give the audience and our band and ourselves as much variety as possible. Spend some time listening, and I mean really, really listening Practice with some songs in your practice time. If, you, if you've got a favorite song you like to play along with, try to pick out a different part each time you go through it. Get acquainted with your instrument and your effects pedal and how those things work together to create different sounds and textures. Have fun. In some upcoming episodes, I'm going to break down some songs that I play with my band that have non-traditional violin parts in them. Uh, we'll get really down into the weeds on how I make my decisions, how I make my sounds, how I use them, what I do in a song, Please don't forget to click subscribe so that you can be notified every time we put up a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.